Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate a research prototype, a live code editor that mixes features of a REPL and a debugger, naturally called Replugger. But first, a little context. In the modern programming experience, most programmers type text into a text editor and imagine how the program works in their heads. They have to reconstruct the program's behavior mentally without much feedback from the program itself. This doesn't really make any sense and leads to some problems. The lack of feedback makes programming hard for beginners to understand, and this tragically limits the type of people that can access programming. The lack of feedback also leads to unnecessary and easily avoidable software bugs, and makes programming an unpleasant and frustrating experience even for experts. So instead of playing computer in our heads, can we get the real computer in front of us to show us directly what our programs are doing? We have some hints. In a previous research prototype I made called Flowsheets, Users type Python code and see the results of that code immediately in a grid, kind of like a spreadsheet. This combination of code, data, and immediate feedback made programming flowsheets feel great, and flowsheets became my preferred way to manipulate data, even though it was just a research prototype. But the experience was geared more towards smaller scripts and not large programs, so I began to wonder if there's a way of getting some of the benefits of flowsheets in a more complex software project. I created another prototype to test some of these ideas, which I'll show you now. This is Replugger, an editor that integrates the liveliness of a REPL and the comprehensiveness of a debugger directly into the programming experience. On the left we have an editor. In this case we're editing a real file from a project with a few thousand lines of code. On the right we have a debugging interface, a table listing scopes, names, and values from a sample run of the program. And at the bottom, we show the output of the line the cursor is on. Changing the cursor changes the debugger and output UIs. You can see as I move the cursor around, the names under the cursor are added to the table, and the output at the bottom changes too. And the same applies if I type new code. Why is this useful? Well, here's an example from my experience. There's a function I often forget the order of the arguments to. In Replugger, the values are shown and I can examine them directly, so I can look at the function definition just right here. Or I can type the name of that function into the editor and see the function definition right there. No looking up documentation needed. This feature is a standard part of many IDEs, but in Replugger, inline documentation comes for free. The live output isn't just for documentation though, it's also useful in the ways a REPL is useful. I can write little expressions and see what happens. For example, in this program there's a grid and I want to see the grid's height. I can multiply the number of rows in the grid by the height of each row to see the total height of the grid. And I can change the values this expression depends on and see how that affects the grid height. Replugger tries to be smart about evaluating code. For example, say I want to create a condition if the grid height is bigger than the window's height. I can write this condition, and even though it's not a valid line to type into a REPL, Replugger knows to evaluate just the condition of this line and give an output of it. In this case, the condition is true, but if I want more information, I could highlight just one part of the expression and Replugger will show me the value of that expression. Even with these simple features, Replugger gives programmers useful concrete feedback about their programs. This helps beginners understand how their program is being interpreted by the computer and helps experts sharpen their mental models. Unlike a REPL or a notebook, expressions in Replugger are evaluated within a larger program's context, closer to the conditions the actual program is running under. Let's look at that idea more closely. The basic idea of Replugger is to create a sample environment that gives us just enough feedback to be useful as we're programming. For example, when we move the cursor around, Replugger tries to execute the program up until the current line. Here in this function though, it needs some context. These three names shown in red are arguments to the function. Replugger doesn't know what the values of those arguments could be, so it asks you to fill them in. Let's do that. They turn yellow to indicate that they've been modified. 
Once the arguments are filled in, the function's behavior can be explored using the output UI. The arguments can be changed further to test out specific scenarios. And these arguments are saved in the editor so that they can be reused when returning to the code later. Filling in values is especially useful in more complex nested code. For example, on this line we see a couple things. First, we see this line is in a function that needs arguments to be filled. So let's do that. I'll paste in a little code here and Replugger evaluated the code and is showing me the result. I can click back on the value to see the original expression and to change it if I want. Next, we see an error on line 139. Looking at that line, we see that this code expects resize drag to be non-null, but here we can see that it's null. Uh, so what happened is Replugger ignored this if statement to try and run this code, but it created an error. So what we can do to remove that error and give us live feedback is we can create an overwrite. So the way that works is I can click this add name uh, function in the dropdown, say I want to overwrite resize drag, and overwrite it with a new resize drag object. What this does is create a new entry in the table that overwrites any previous values of resize drag, but only in the context of this scope. If I navigate out of the scope, the overwrite disappears. Overwriting is useful in creating specific system states so that certain parts of code can run. In this case, we have enough context to modify this part of the code, and we'll have live feedback as we do it we can see that all the expressions that relied on resize drag now have values. These overwrites can be saved and used later too. I'll save this one and name it, well, we'll name it default. And so if I change this value to something else, I can get back to the overwrite that I just made and saved by clicking it here in the drop-down menu. You can imagine overwrites being useful for teams of programmers. If the overwrites were saved in source control, then any team member using Replugger could use overwrites other programmers created to get live feedback as they program. Shared overwrites would also have the added benefit of giving programmers unfamiliar with a piece of code some context about what states the original programmer expected the code to run under. Finally, Replugger also supports overwrites as a way of quickly and fluidly creating and validating experiments. Earlier we tried changing a variable called cell height directly in the code, but say we want to experiment with that value while we're in a completely different place in the code to see what happens. What we can do is we can edit the value directly in this table. The value will be overwritten temporarily, and anything that depends on that value will be updated accordingly. You can see the height variable down here changes as I change cell height. And these experiments can be saved as shown before. A lot of what makes programming hard, especially in big systems, is that there are so many different states a program can have. Replugger gives programmers the ability to quickly modify these states directly and see what happens. Intuition is one of a programmer's best friends, but intuition works best given feedback and a low barrier to experimentation. So that's Replugger. I think it represents a scalable live programming environment that could be useful for both beginners and experts. In particular, I think the introduction of actual program data into the programming experience grounds understanding, 
making it so programmers don't have to imagine what the program is doing in their heads. As I said, Replugger is a research prototype, which means I built it to demonstrate the idea. It's not a production-ready system, and would take a lot of engineering to get to a usable state. Unfortunately, I don't have the time to do this, but I think it would be worth the effort if someone did. If you're excited about turning Replugger into a full-fledged project, I'd love to talk with you. And if you're interested in the future of programming, you might be interested in my newsletter, where I send out very occasional emails about my projects. There's a link to it in the description. Thanks for watching.